Okay, so this is the HDA Fave variant. Um, reason why I designed this fly, uh, simply it's a great attractor pattern, great for searching new water, uh, has really great animation and life to it in the water. Uh, you can fish it dead drift, uh, Euro nymph rig, dry dropper rig, swing it out the end of the drift, again, it, and, and has a great descent rate. Um, <clears throat> so it sinks really fast. Uh, staying in the zone, uh, being able to fish it for an extended period of time in the water. Again, just maximizing that time. This fly stays in the fish's face in a sense. Um, so we'll go ahead and get into uh, how to tie this guy. All right, so what we're using today is jig hooks. Obviously, uh, I developed this fly while I was uh, competing on Fly Fishing Team USA. Had been on the team for a long time, uh, 22 years in competition. And uh, as of 2018, took a break. And so I'm able to bring you more videos. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so again, uh, when, I, when I get into competition, you're looking for flies and patterns that have um, a lot that you can build a lot of confidence and faith in. So I've been tying this fly for a long time. And as the name goes, it is actually based off of an existing pattern that is a custom tie for High Desert Angler uh, called the HDA Favorite. Uh, HDA Favorite, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> so I modified it and added some other aspects that um, just would make it a much more attractor type pattern and that I can utilize when searching and, and probing through new waters, but at the same time that I can utilize during uh, the hatch phase or even you know again just swinging flies out uh, creating trying to get life out of my bug itself so uh, to start with the jig <coughs> to start with we're gonna run a jig hook and we're looking at the Umqua uh, 4 C450 right now this fly uh, as far as Umqua and their production uh, they tie it on the competition 403 um, so that's just a slight difference, a little bit more of a beaked bend on the point. Um, been, you know, utilizing this hook a little bit more lately. And the reason why I'm using it now is because I'm out of 403s and a 14. And I just happen to have this and I've been fishing it and it's actually been pretty good. So I've been liking it. So we'll just go ahead and stick with this for now. But again, uh, the Umqua uh, production is on the C403. Uh, slotted bead, gold bead, tungsten bead, 3.3 uh, millimeter. I'm sorry, I don't know that conversion in inches as of now. I should, but I, I, I don't. I just stick in the millimeters. It's so much more simple. <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right, so, and then thread, we're gonna go ahead and uh, utilize what I like to tie with Vivas uh, in a 14 knot light olive. And uh, we will be utilizing uh, some UTC fluorescent fire orange in 70 denier uh, for the hot spot collar. All right, we'll get our thread started. I'm just going to set it and kind of bring my thread wraps into the slot of the bead there and then come forward. Um, <clears throat> and what I'm going to do actually is just go ahead and cut my tag here and just bring this thread into the base of the bead and sometimes just filling in that void in between the slot uh, and the hook shank just to help hold it in place a little better. So <clears throat> I'm going to bring my thread wraps uh, just shy of mid uh, hook shank here. So uh, and this is where I'm going to tie in some uh, lead wire again uh, for added sink rate. I'm going to point 0.015 and the way I tie my lead is I go perpendicular to the hook uh, keeping the lead on my side and then just crisscross thread wraps uh, X style around the, the wire itself and then bring my thread to the base of the eye uh, uh, of the bead. <clears throat> so when I go to wrap this, uh, it'll give me one, two, three, four ish uh, turns of lead wrap. And basically that lead wrap seated right up against the bead will just um, anchor that bead in place and it's not gonna go anywhere. It, and it prevent it from spinning around on you and whatnot. Um, now I don't always do that on all my flies if I don't need near as much weight, uh, but it just helps right now. So I'm gonna bring my thread, wrap it back towards, or just past the lead wrap there. And then we're gonna tie in the tail. And the tail is bronze mallard, uh, natural in color. 
I have one here that I've been tying with, uh, but you can see just some really great coloring and um, speckled patterning on the fibers. Uh, just gives it really a nice natural appeal to it. So peeling back, oh, uh, almost about half an inch of material, maybe just slightly less, but I uh, want to build a really nice solid tail, make sure it has some presence. So I'm just pulling the fibers perpendicular to the shaft of the feather and just lining up my tips right here. And I'll go ahead and just kind of fold those, rip the stem away, switch hands so I can lay it on. The tail is going to be the length of the body of the fly. So boom there, transition. Now it's going to be a little longer because I'm going to tie it in right at the start or the end of my uh, lead wrap there and just check it. That's a little long. Dial back a turn. There you go. Okay. All right. <clears throat> then we're going to add in some rib. Uh, we're going with copper wire and brassy. So we got a strand here and the end of my copper wire I'm going to place right up against my lead wraps there. And, and really what I'm doing now uh, with all this material that I'm layering in is just building uh, the body, if you will. So I'm, I'm filling in that gap or that stair step from the lead wrap to the hook shank uh, so that you can build out a, nice, uh, a nicer taper to the fly. And at the same time, wrapping everything underneath in one go reduces bulk as far as thread wraps on the flip side. So uh, again, just creating a nice taper to your fly. So I added my uh, flashback, which is just uh, pearl tinsel in the large thickness. Um, flat, you can use Mirage if you want to be extra flashy, but I don't really see a need for it. <clears throat> so once I got that there, I can go ahead and clip my tail tag away. Notice I kind of saved that until later in the, in the game here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and build a body uh, with just hair's ear dubbing, natural, no flash in it. And again, you got copper rib and flashback to help give it a little bit of pop. So just pulling out a little chunk here. And we're gonna go ahead and dub this on. So we're gonna take our little dubbing clump here. And what I like to do when I dub on is I'll just create a little bit of a linear mat of dubbing, if you will, in, in my fingertips. I don't know if you can kind of see that. And then I'll just lay the thread right on top and I'll pinch and twist my dubbing right near the fly. I don't add any wax on the thread and I'm, I'm pinching and twisting this dubbing um, kind of down the thread here away from the fly. Uh, without wax, I can actually manipulate and slide this little dubbing noodle up and down the thread here and get it in position where I want it when I when I know I got the dubbing nice and tight on my thread. So I'll go ahead and just start wrapping up towards the bead. Oh, so that kind of just loosened up on me. You can go ahead and tighten that down. And keep working your way up all the way to the bead. Okay, so that was perfect. So these stragglers and whatnot, I can just get rid of um, just to one, help me see what's going on and at the same time for you uh it's not necessary to get rid of that stuff but for you to visually um you know i don't want a whole lot going on to confuse you guys so i'm bringing my um flashback towards the bead here right at the base of the bead one two turns bring my wrap in front just for um a little bit of security but i'm just going to score the edge of the mylar with my scissor tip I'm not cutting the whole thing just yet, so I can just tear that away. Just makes it um, cut a little cleaner, closer to the bead itself. And then I'll go ahead and take my copper wire and let's rib uh, this fly. I don't do a ton of ribs or ribbing on um, my flies. I like to keep my ribbing separated out a little more. So that's three wraps, four-ish. Um, and the reason why is I feel um, <clears throat> a little more width in between your wraps, uh, whether it be um, any kind of ribbing, just gives the fly more contrast and gives you better segmentation in your flies themselves. So go ahead and just hold my thread and then uh, spin that wire off. 
<clears throat> all right so hopefully you guys can see where that's coming in right now but we got three wraps there all right so now we're going to tie in our cdc <clears throat> uh i am using natural dark done from trout hunter so just select something that has uh, some good volume to it uh, nice and uh, fluffy for some good movement <clears throat> um, so I do use the Petajan magic tool uh, as you notice I cleaned away some of this little fuzzy stuff that you can find on the bottom sometimes and so what I'm going to do here is just separate some material now the fuzzier it is you can see how uh, the barbules on each fiber uh, really give it more volume um, <clears throat> you don't have to use near as much uh, compared to a uh, feather that might be a little thinner in the bar barbules. Uh, the, again, volume, um, it, it creates a lot of volume. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna separate these, set them in my tool here. Now it's not gonna capture every feather because if you notice, you got some of these little short ones in here. So you'll notice that when I pull this feather away. Uh, so I just hold the tool, rip the stem away you got most of them, <clears throat> but I'm going to go ahead and trim away these little uh, pieces of the stem that came with uh, the feathers and then just kind of knock free these uh, short ones here. That way they're, they're not twisting and those can kind of tangle up your, your uh, material in the dubbing loop. So it thinned out, but that's not bad. That's going to be a good amount or a solid amount for this fly here. All right. <clears throat> so... Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make a dubbing loop. Just lengthen out my thread here with my bobbin. I uh, just loop it around my fingertip. Give myself a little more. <clears throat> and then just holding it in my fingertip here, I'm just going to bring my thread towards uh, the fly and wrap it over. And then twist my thread around the dubbing loop and just tie it off a couple times. I don't want to do much more than that. Again, I just I don't want to build a ton of bulk there uh, because then I still have an overwing and then my hotspot collar to tie in. So I'm going to take my CDC here and then just go ahead and slide that in the dubbing loop. So you can kind of see it. I got it right here. Slide that in there and, and then just pinch down my dubbing loop to lock those uh, fibers in there. I'm going to get my finger out of there, take my dubbing whirler, which is this guy. And then just slide that in, spin that up. Now I don't like... I. I know you can have the dubbing whirler already in the dubbing loop and all that, but I just feel like it doesn't really, I, I don't have control over it near as much. <clears throat> so I'm just going to take a little Velcro strip and, and tease that out just to get all these fibers free uh, to tie in. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the dubbing whirler, place it with a uh, hackle plier, and then I'm just going to pull all these fibers back towards the tail here. Uh, just like you were to wrap a soft tackle and because I want all these fibers facing towards the tail here again creating that um, profile that I want and then just go ahead and wrap all your fibers keeping uh, your fibers pulled back towards the tail all the way and then tie off your dubbing loop one in front just to lock it down all right <clears throat> So we got that set there. Now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and take that fire or, uh, fluorescent fire orange thread. We're gonna swap out the olive thread, tying thread with the fluorescent fire orange here. So I'm just looping it over the, the body and then spinning it around my olive thread and do it one more time. And now it's locked in and you can cut away your olive thread here. Now the reason why I add this in now is so it has durability. That hot spot collar, I don't want to add it in as an afterthought because as your flies get wet, you know, it dries, uh, gets uh, moistened, and so it, it, it expands and contracts, and, and usually that ends up having or creating the, the th this thread to come off, basically. It just undoes itself, even if it's glued half-hitched or whatever. I find that tying it, tying this fly in now will add durability. Now, originally, I would use partridge skin uh, for the overwing, but these uh, were having um, uh, issues of uh, being raised, uh, disease or whatnot, and so we swapped out uh, 
and went with Brahma hen, which was more readily available. Uh, this is a hen saddle. Uh, Brahma hen, you can see that. And so on this saddle, we're going to use these feathers that are near the base here. So these feathers here are about the perfect size for a 14. So I'll grab one of those guys out. <clears throat> see all the fluffy stuff? I will get rid of that. Just makes it easier to deal with um, while tying, wrapping, and all that. So there's my feather. I'm going to go ahead and take my hackle pliers and just pinch it right at the tip uh, of the feather there. That way I can separate this material here. And then I'm just going to trim that away. So that little V-shape right there is, is what I'm going to tie in. Um, <clears throat> and that way I don't have anything to cut. So once I tie that in, I can fold that little piece back and that'll lock it in place. And just like your CDC, you're going to pull these fibers back in a wet fly type manner. And you can get about one and a half turns. And just like the CDC, these hen hackles are they have a lot of volume to them and so you don't need to wrap a lot uh, or do many turns in order to get the effect that you're looking for so I'll clip that guy away and notice you, your feathers didn't really lay or, or sit the way I wanted them to so I'm just gonna pull all these back and then just wrap over the base now one thing you got to be careful of is not to create too big of a collar but at the same time, nope, I need to spin this and tighten this up. So just remember with UTC, it is a flat thread, uh, meaning if it unwinds on you, it can splay out and create a little bit of an issue. Okay, so getting these wrapped in there. Go ahead and a lot of times you can just use your thumbnail to fold those um, fibers back so it lays the way you want it to. All right, so at this point, we're about ready to tie this off. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and um, we're also gonna utilize um, some UV resin here. Just add a little to the thread itself. Take the extended whip finisher. And so your UV resin is basically coating even uh, subsurface wraps. Trim my thread, take my UV light, hit that. And there you go. There's your HDA Fave variant. And again, you know, great searching pattern, great profile, excellent sync rate. Uh, utilize it in any rig system that you're comfortable with. Um, just a great all-around pattern.